hello everyone welcome back to the channel miss coffee here and today as you can tell i got a little something going on with my throat don't even worry about it i'll be fine now <clears throat> with that said also you're gonna hear tiny little pitter patters uh, the ferrets are out so today we are back with q a number 14 okay so this week you were looking for the picture or this week and last week because we did a uh, postpone it you were looking for the picture of Killian trying to eat the window. So that is the picture that we are going off today. I hope everyone is having a wonderful, wonderful day. So let's go ahead and get started. Our first question, sorry, comes to us from Queen of Diamonds 4. Hello, Miss Coffee. Hey. I hope you and the family are doing well. I have a diamond painting question for you. Shoot. When you have to reverse diamond paint, remove drills placed into the wrong place. Is there any way to make those drills less sticky? Thank you. I love your YouTube and Twitch. Oh, well, thank you, Queen of Diamonds. Um, to make the drills less sticky, uh, the only thing I can think of is to soak them in warm, soapy water and then uh, kind of strain them onto a paper towel and then kind of rub them. That might make them less sticky. That's the only thing I can really think of. Um, usually I don't worry about it because I immediately just move those drills to the right place. And that way I don't have to worry about them being back in the bag and being all sticky and weird. So possibly try the warm water if you don't want to try the warm water. Um, just immediately, once you take them off the canvas, put them, like, find a spot where there's a lot of that drill color or something. And put them on the spot that they're supposed to be on. So hopefully that helps. Uh, so thank you so much, Queen of Diamonds 4, for your question. The next question comes to us from a pony gal. Hey, Miss Coffee. Hey, I'm Ashley. Hey, Ashley. First, I would like to say that I enjoy your videos. Thank you. Again, the voice thing. I don't know what's going on. I always watch or listen to While I Diamond Paint with, with helping Parakeet. And by helping, I mean he picks the diamonds off the canvas and flicks them into onto the floor. <laughs> Anyways, I really love that your videos are 30 to 60 minutes long so I can focus on diamond painting so I don't worry if you think your videos are getting too long my question i purposely actually make my videos not super duper long uh just because the average attention span of myself is not very long and anything past the like hour and a half you've lost me you've lost me you've lost me so i try to i try to keep it below hour and a half uh sometimes these videos get a little bit crazy but for the most part, like, everything else is kept below an hour and a half, so. I appreciate you saying that, though. Anyways, uh, I really like your video. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, the question. What is your DP pet peeve? Mine is when I put the wrong color down, so I have to remove, and it's a pain. Have you ever done that? All the time. Um, keep making good, the good videos, and have a nice day. Bye. Thank you so much, Ashley, for your question. Now, her question was, uh, what is my biggest pet peeve with diamond painting? And do I ever put the wrong drill color down on the canvas? One, everybody does that. There's a time, there's not a single diamond painter out there that can say, I've never put the wrong color on the wrong symbol. Everybody does it. It's something, it's, it's kind of a rite of passage at this point. Everybody does it. Um... When it comes to pet peeves, my biggest pet peeve is when I'm trying to flip my pen from the single placer to the multi-placer, and I drop it, and then it splashes into my, uh, it, it goes into my drill tray and splashes all my diamonds out. That's my biggest pet peeve. <laughs> I hate it, and I do it often. So, thank you so much, Ashley, for your question. JY says, hi, Miss Coffee. Hey. Thank you for answering my questions in the last Q&A. I was so excited. I love watching your channel. Sending hugs to you and the coffee family. Well, thank you, JY. I appreciate that. Uh, the ferrets. <laughs> Real life happens back here, y'all. So thank you so much, JY, for that. I really appreciate it. Hugs to you and yours as well. Anna, Anna, sorry. Anna says, hello, Miss Coffee. Hello, Anna. <laughs> my question is regarding your current mystery DP. Okay. Would you consider covering up the already finished section to keep it mystery going? No. That might make it really neat to reveal at the end. I don't care. 
I honestly don't care. And that's not me being any type of way towards you, Anna. That's me in general. Uh, working on a mystery DP is already a pain in the ass because you have to try to keep the sections that aren't completed covered up. And so to have to cover up, if, if that's the case, I might as well just rip it up and throw it in the trash. If I have to cover it up to keep the mystery, the the biggest thing I would have to say is if you don't want to see it, don't watch my channel for the next six months. I'm not hiding it. I'm not hiding it. This is my channel. And I don't feel that I need to hide it to keep the mystery. Especially seeing as how about 99.9% .9 of people already know what the kit looks like. I'm not then going to inconvenience myself by hiding it to keep the mystery. To me, that's stupid. I'm just... It is what it is. I'm not trying to be any type of way towards Anna. I'm just saying. If somebody you know that does YouTube videos is working on a mystery diamond painting and you don't want to know what it is, don't watch their videos. Because it's already a pain in the ass, the fact that we have to do special things to hide it uh, when we do post-progress pictures or anything like that. It's one of the reasons why I don't want to work on it anymore because people keep, oh, 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 well, would you, would you work it with the mystery, DP? Would you be, no, I won't. I'm just going to work on it. I'm just going to, I just want to work on it. And already, since I've already lost my DP mojo, like, it's it's gone. It's, it's completely gone. Like, the last thing I want to do is diamond paint. And then to have to cover up and hide it from people. No. If you don't want to see it, don't watch the channel. That's all I can say to you. Uh, also, here's a crafting meme I thought you would enjoy. Be nice to crafters. We have enough creativity to make your deal, your death, look like an accident. And due to a lifetime of hot glue burns, we have no fingerprint. That is very true. You ever worked with a hot glue gun? If you haven't. You still have fingerprints, but I know back in the day I used to do, like, uh, felting and stuff like that, and I would burn my finger. I'm pretty sure I don't have fingerprints anymore. You, you that, that's, that meme is very true. <laughs> so thank you, Anna, for your question, but honestly, no, I'm not looking to do anything, anything different or special to keep the mystery alive of the mystery diamond painting. I, feel, I, I figure if most people don't want to see it, and especially seeing as how when I diamond paint anyways... You're only seeing the section I'm working on. You're not seeing the entire canvas. If I have to do anything else special to it, throw it away. I don't want to work on it anymore. <laughs> so thank you so much, Anna, for your question. Uh, the next question comes to us from Melanie Elizabeth. Miss Coffee! Melanie! You are hands down one of my favorite people on, here, on these here internets. And you have become an integral part of my weekly routine over the last three years thank you for always sharing the love and keeping it real my question for you is what are your top five favorite zo ooh, girl, ooh, ooh, ooh. um i love these hu little hugs for your wrist and i like knowing which ones inspire and speak to other people my favorite are human dear universe i'm ready please tell mr coffee and that's just a ferret the little lattes to keep up their shenanigans so you will always have stories to tell us. <laughs> Take care. Thank you for being you. So, uh, Killian, so essentially tell the family to stay crazy so that I go crazy and can tell y'all all the craziness. Got it. One. Two. Favorite. Oh, God. Okay. So, for those of you who don't know what she's talking about or are new to my channel, hi. Welcome. I'm Miss Coffee. These are my bracelets, are, are my Zox bracelets. So, these little, uh, hugs for your wrist so these are my zox bracelets they change every video i have so literally i have an entire like i in my desk drawer i have literally like a pile of these bracelets i have over 500 bracelets and hold on all right so i have over 500 of these bracelets and uh as for favorites ugh uh, my favorites are probably going to be any of them. I think one is called Serenity, and it's purple and has moons on it. There's another one that has, like, pretty much all my favorite ones are going to be the ones with moons. Um, just because I'm a big astrological person, so I really like those. Um, but as for favorites, my favorites are probably in my pearl clubs, to be honest. Uh, the pearl clubs are the special ones you get in the little box. And the Pearl Club is like 25 bucks a month, and you get like a bracelet and a pin to match the bracelet. Uh, but I can't tell you off the top of my head what's one of my favorites because I have so many of them. 
I couldn't possibly pick them out, but I know one of my top favorite ones is going to be Serenity. I do remember that one. Um, if I remember correctly, I actually probably have like an extra one of that one because I was so scared that I wasn't going to get it. I accidentally bought two. Um, but pretty much any of them that have uh, Celestial stuff on them uh, is going to be my favorite ones, but I couldn't pinpoint which ones exactly are my favorite. So thank you so much, Melanie, for your question, and thank you for being a, a long-term subscriber. The fact that you can deal with this crazy for three years, good God. So thank you so much. I appreciate you. The next question comes to us from Sierra. Sierra says, hey, Miss Coffee. Hey. Hope you and your family are doing well. My question is, if there is one genre of music you had to listen to for the rest of your life, what would it be? 90s R&B. 90s R&B. Is, is there any question? What they're making... Okay, I feel like my, my, my parents right now, because my parents used to say the same crap whenever I was growing up. What's this crap they making now? I don't know what that... Mumble rap? Mumble rap. When you're too lazy to talk and you have to mumble rap, look, listen. No, thank you. No, thank you. I will take my 90s R&B and sit over there. Thank you. <laughs> Easy question. 90s R&B. All day, every day. I can't with this music nowadays. <laughs> so, thank you so much, Sierra, for your question. The next one comes to us from Jesus Books Music. Hello there, Miss Coffee. I'm so glad that you loved my job question. Look, listen, that job question was everything. My job question. Here are two more for you. Did you always want to be a mom? No, never wanted to be a mom. Never, ever wanted to be a mom. Did you always want exactly three kids? Nope, didn't want any kids. So when I was growing up, <clears throat> I hated kids. I still do. I, I'm not a big fan of kids. Um, I did not like kids. I didn't. I literally, when my nephew, when my my oldest nephew was a baby, I literally tried to, I almost did. I, I tried pushing him off the top bunk of my bunk bed because my parents put him up there thinking it was funny, and I kicked him off. Like, my mom caught him as I kicked him off. Yeah, I got my butt whooped for it, but I didn't like kids. No, never wanted kids. Mr. Coffee was the same way. Uh, that's which one of the things that uh, I, I liked about Mr. Coffee is the fact that he didn't want kids. Now, did we do anything to prevent us from having kids? Yes. Did it still happen? Yes. So, obviously, I was meant to have kids. Uh, there's something there that I'm, I'm meant to learn. And I've learned a lot being a parent. And one of them is that mm, kids aren't so bad. I just didn't want them at the time. Nowadays, um, I actually wanted one more. Um... But Mr. Coffee was like, hell no. <laughs> he was like, no, no, uh-uh, no. You got two out of me. No, that's enough. I didn't want any. We got two. All right, fine. Um, but no, I don't like odd numbers. I hate odd numbers. And it will forever, like, grind my gears, that fact that I only have three and not four kids. Um, because it's, it's the OCD thing. But no, I never wanted kids growing up. And now that I am a parent, I couldn't imagine my life without my kids. Like... They all have this little piece of me that I see in them that just makes me giggle. Um, Maggie more so than the rest of them. She has, where I, when I was a child, I was like Maggie, but I didn't act on it. I only thought about doing it. Maggie actually acts on it. And that's one of the things about Maggie that I love so much is the fact she's so crazy. And she, you never know what she's going to do from minute to minute. So you got to always keep eyes on her. <laughs> um, but no. And now that I have three kids, I actually wanted one more, but it just wasn't in the cards. And I got to be to an age where I was just like, you know what? Three's a good number. I mean, technically, Minna stays with her dad, so in the house, I only have two. Um, but, of course, Minna, no matter where she lives, she's still my kid. Um, but... After Minna, I, I thought I was done. I was like, I'm not, who the hell would do this again? Like, why? Why would you do this again? And then I ended up having Orion and Maggie, and I was like, can I have one more? <laughs> um, so, yeah, no, I never wanted kids at all. Not at all. Uh, wouldn't trade my kids for the world. Still not the biggest fan of kids. Not other people's kids. My kids I can deal with because I can control them and make them do what I need them to do. Other people's kids... I, I do well with little kids and stuff, but <laughs> so
So thank you so much for that question, Jesus Books Music. I'm just, uh, honestly, I, yeah, no, I, know, I never wanted kids. <laughs> I thought I was going to be one of those people that just never had kids. And then apparently I'm a fertile myrtle. So the next question comes to us from Angela. Hey, Miss Coffee. Hey. I thought Orion might enjoy this webcomic series I found called Breaking Cat News. Oh, sweet Lord. The artist slash writer is Georgia Dunn, and her comic follows her cat along with some neighborhood cats and all the antics slash mischief they get into. I love this series and thought Orion might enjoy it too. Here's a link to the page, and Georgia has a Facebook group too. Have a great weekend. Oh, thank you so much, Angela. I did, excuse me, when she put this comment up, I did, uh... <clears throat> take a look at it and it actually is pretty good i never gave it to orion though because i forgot because you know stroke brain so i will make sure he gets this today if you are interested in checking out the web comic of course look for angela's comment here on the q a thing i don't take and put take them down so you can look for her comment there so <clears throat> the next question comes to us from i'm just saying hey miss coffee hey hey i have a question that may have been answered before my time as an Aussie, where and when did Mr. Coffee acquire the didgeridoo? Much love to the Coffee House family from Queensland, Australia. Now, okay. So, for those of you who don't know what she's talking about, um, Mr. Coffee plays a didgeridoo every Friday night. Who are you? You're Anna. Okay. Mr. Coffee plays a didgeridoo every Friday night in my life. It's the start to the disclaimer where I tell you that if you don't like what I'm doing, get the hell out of my life. Um, and so a few years ago, I want to say it was about two years ago, um, we were in chat and Mr. Co so, so we were talking, I think we were talking about playing instruments or something. And the only reason why I remember this, because I get asked this a lot, um, but I don't think it's been asked in the, in the Q&A yet. I'm not sure. I don't remember. <laughs> but uh we were talking about instruments or something and mr coffee made mention that he's always wanted a didgeridoo now me being who i am i was like what the flip is a didgeridoo um but apparently these are something that you can purchase online and my dad was like my son-in-law wants a didgeridoo and i'm like so he's like i'm getting him a didgeridoo i'm like you better not bring no didgeridoo into my house about three days later there was a didgeridoo in my house Sorry, there's a ferret trying to, for those who didn't know, we have ferrets. This is Anna. Hi, Anna. <laughs> Hi. So you get a bonus, you get an Anna. Are you tired? Are you gonna get down and play? All right, go play. trying to take my shoe but i won't let her um so yeah so mr. my my dad bought mr coffee the didgeridoo after him saying that he wanted a didgeridoo he's always wanted the didgeridoo and now he plays it every friday night in live does he play it well he plays it and it makes noise <laughs> if you ask him it makes noise so there's that so thank you so much i'm just saying for your question um the next one comes to us from luz is it luz i hope it's luz if it's not i'm so sorry that i butchered your name um, hi, Miss Coffee. Hey. Hope you, hope everyone is well. My question is, I have done 34 regular diamond paintings, and because of your unboxings, I purchased eight diamond art clubs in the past two weeks. So I have saved my drills. Would you recommend that I save the DAC, drill, the DAC drills separately as the video shows they are more shiny? I have only done rounds, and some, DAC, some of my DACs are square. Thank you for any advice you have. So, when it comes to storing away drills, now, I don't typically keep my drills, mostly because I haven't been diamond painting anymore. But, when I was keeping my drills, I always kept Diamond Art Club's drills separate from everybody else's drills. Just like I would keep DIY Moonshop's drills away from DI or from any other company as well. Um, certain companies use different dye lots, meaning their colors can be a little off or a little too pigmented. Um... So, Diamond Art Club has seemed to find that happy balance in the DMC code list um, that a lot of other companies haven't found yet. 
So I would always recommend keeping their drills separate. Plus, you're, if you you know you're going to get good quality drills if you keep those separate. So you're not having to worry about picking out trash whenever you're doing a kit and you're missing a color. And you have to go into your stash to find a color. Um, so there's that. Um, mm, 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 mm. So yeah, so I would definitely say yes. Keep, keep Diamond Art Club drills separate. Um, I don't know what other companies you've worked with. But if they have good drills and everything else you can still keep them but i would definitely still just keep diamond art clubs drill separate so there's that so thank you so much for your question the next question comes to us from missy hermit she says question about killian he has been getting those pills and and has he been getting those pills or any medicine for ticks Yeah, the dogs get like a, uh, uh, what is it, a uh, Lyme disease shot or something. I don't remember what it's called. The dogs get a shot like that like every year or something like that. Um, I asked because my dog was going through a similar situation. I haven't done, haven't used anything on my dog for two years now and I have, ha haven't had a, a problem. We never used anything until we moved up here and I feel like the vets are pretty pushy about it. Anyways... Something to think about. I really enjoy your videos, and you make time go by faster when I work, and thank you. Oh, which, by the way, for those who have been hearing me ask, is Missy a Jeep dealer? Because she was in What You Got Wednesday this week, and she sent me the ducks to do the ducking for the Jeeps. She does not <laughs> work at a Jeep dealership, nor does she own one. She she said she would love to, but she doesn't. <laughs> um, But, yeah, they they used to get a Lyme disease shot. They haven't in the longest time, though, because the vet we were going to didn't offer them. So they haven't really been getting anything. I don't think they've gotten anything in the last two years because we were going to the other vet. The vet we go to now, they're not really pushy about it. They're just kind of like, do you want something to protect them from ticks? It's not something we see here often, but, you know, whatever. And I'm like, then why would I waste 60 bucks? Like, Now, if I was still living in Pennsylvania, that is a definite guess because ticks are horrendous in Pennsylvania, but up here in North Dakota, especially where I live, Killian has gotten a tick on him one time since we've moved here. Uh, back when we used to go back in the field behind the house here, he did have a tick on him, but it was dead and it didn't attach itself to him. Uh, it essentially died in his fur. He got really thick fur. It couldn't get through. <laughs> I was brushing him out one day and I saw it and I was just like, this thing... Aren't ticks supposed to be, like, fat or something? And then uh, we took it to the vet, and the vet said there was no blood in the tick. The tick had just per Apparently, it just died. Uh, it wasn't dead long, but there was no blood in it. She was like, more than likely, it just died in his fur. And I was like, oh, okay. And they did a checkup of him and everything and did blood work and everything. He seemed fine, so... No, what he's got going on, we definitely know is zinc from the biopsies and the blood test and everything else. Um, but... I'll have to keep an eye out for that. So thank you so much, Missy, for your question. The next one is from Marsha. Good more, good evening, Miss Coffee and family. I hope you got some rest today. I would like to know, Miss Coffee, after some people get on your last nerve, how do you vent? How do you calm yourself down and your family stay safe and enjoy the rest of your weekend? Hope you had fun at the pool with the family. We're going back to the pool today. <laughs> how do I vent? Um, Becky's Madness or Crafting. If me and Becky ever stopped talking, like, got into, like, one of those, like, we're not friends anymore situations, Becky could ruin my entire life. <laughs> With as much information as that is poured into Becky's brain from me, Becky could ruin my entire life. Becky is who I go to to vent. Uh, when I'm having trouble with my husband, when I'm having trouble with my kids, my dogs, people on the internet. Becky. Becky, not, no lie. And I never really have problems with Becky, so I don't need to vent about her. So it's literally just Becky. If someone makes me mad or whatever, I vent to Becky. And she will tell you, she hears it all. <laughs> she hears it all. <laughs> poor Becky. <laughs> Hashtag poor Becky. <laughs> so yeah, whenever I'm in a bad mood, so I talk to Becky because Becky always makes me feel better. She always has like, even when she's angry, she always has like this very cheerful demeanor. And I don't know what it is. Usually stuff like that would be like, oh God, she's one of these people that's always happy. But surprisingly, it's not. She seems to calm me down. So, Becky. 
or, or, <laughs> lately, Rachel. <laughs> um, I will, like, when it comes to, like, stuff, like, behind the scenes stuff with YouTube or Twitch, I go to Rachel, and I'm like, Rachel, did you notice this BS? And she's like, dude, look, listen, you're preaching to the choir. F this place. And I was like, yes, I hate it here. <laughs> so Becky and Rachel are my go-tos for when I want to vent. Mostly Becky, though, because uh, with the time difference, sometimes it's hard to get a hold of Rachel. So there's that. So thank you, Marsha, for your question. <laughs> Tyra Taylor is in the house. What's going on, Tyra? Hey, Miss Coffee and family. I hope you're doing well. I wanted to tell you I'm back to work, so I'm so excited and happy to say that I have four questions. Hope that's okay. You good. She's like, I'm back to work. Also, I'm very curious. <laughs> uh, first, whatever happened to Maggie's pawpaw bear? Maggie's pawpaw bear is in her bed. She sleeps with it every night. We have to keep giving it batteries because this thing sucks down batteries like nobody's business. But she still has it. She still plays with it. She just is not allowed to take it outside of the house like she tries to do with all her other toys. Um, two. Does Orion still talk to Minna's dad? I'm pretty sure they're playing Fortnite right now. <laughs> Mr. Coffee doesn't play Fortnite, but Minna's dad does. And so Minna's dad will play Fortnite with Orion. And I, I'm pretty sure, I'm not even joking, I'm pretty sure they're playing right now. So yes. Um, Minna's dad and, and Mr. Coffee and I all have, we have a very weird relationship where me and Mena's dad, we don't like each other, but we can get along for the kid's sake. Um, it's not, and it's not like I hate him or anything. I just, he wasn't the right one for me. And he wasn't, he knows that I wasn't the right one for him. And we're okay with this. Um, but we've set our, we set those feelings aside. We haven't been together in 13 years. So like, why are we still like mad about it? Like, what's the point? Um, I got enough stuff to be mad about, believe me, on the daily that I don't need to worry about that too. So, uh, sorry, there's a ferret back here. Um, so the kids do talk and play, which is funny because they talk and play with Mena's dad more than they talk and play with her. So, like, but Mena's a 16-year-old girl, Mena's, Mena's dad, who is a man-child who likes to play video games with kids, or at least with my kids. So, yes, he does still talk to Mena's dad. Uh, three, whatever happened to Mr. Coffee's mom moving? You know what? We were talking about this the other day because we, I, I want her to move here mostly because it would help me out tremendously, especially with, uh, streaming and stuff. And she wouldn't have to work or anything, but M Mr. Coffee's mom is kind of like a gypsy. She likes having her own space. She likes to be able to move around and do as she pleases. And I get that. I totally do. Plus she has, she likes to foster cats. If you know about my house one we have two ferrets and two dogs both both pets will eat a cat one two um she has a lot of cats and she can't bring them here because one we're max capacity for pets and two because orion's allergic to, to cats so she kind of likes doing her own thing she likes having her own space and so we haven't been wanting to push her about moving out here because uh, she likes having her freedom, and I can't be mad at her for that. Um, she, I think at some point she might move out here, but for right now, she's pretty happy where she's at, and she's, like, stable and content, so, like, we don't mess with her about it. We just kind of wait for her to tell us if she wants to move out here. She, I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm pretty sure at some point she will, but right now she's just enjoying her life, you know, doing her thing. So maybe one day you'll see her on the channel or something. I don't know. And four, do you really think Pawpaw will give Achilles back? I hope I spoil, I spelled that correctly. You did. Uh, you spelled it correctly. I think Pawpaw wants him to stay. I have mixed emotions about this. I'm not sure. Because in one sense, I can see my dad not wanting to give Achilles back. Because he has formed a bond and relationship with this dog. And my dad does suffer from depression. Um, and I think Killies helps a lot. On the other hand, my dad also likes the freedom to be able to go where he wants to go when he wants to go without anything holding him back. And because he's retired, uh, not having that extra thing in the house to worry about, uh, 
is what he's trying to go for. The problem is, like I said, I think that if he gave Achilles back, it would spiral him into a depression because he would always be alone. My mom is always doing something. So she can't, like, sit with him every day, all day. And, uh, so I think it would kind of spiral him into a little bit of a depression if he got rid of Achilles. And depression isn't something that you can turn off and on like a switch. So I'm, I'm actually in the hopes that he will keep Achilles because I can already see that he does help, like, the fact that he will sit and watch TV with my dad and they'll eat chips and, and beef jerky together. Uh, my dad has a bond with Achilles, and as much as he hates to admit it, he does love that dog, and, uh, so does my mom, so I, in one sense, I want my dog back, but in another sense, if they didn't give him back, and they did want to keep him, I would completely understand, because he has been there with them for the last four years, and it's kind of hard to break that little bit of a bond, and my dad's just like, nope, take him back, you can take him, you can take him, but I know he would still be sad that he's gone, so, uh, I, I think he would, but I think he would regret it, and he would just not say anything about it. That's just my my thoughts on it. Now, when he watches this, he's going to be like, nope, come get your dog. But you don't have a pet in your house for four years and not grow a bond with the dog, okay? I'm just saying. So, the next question comes to us from Delaney. Hi, Miss Coffee. Hey. like your name, by the way. Um, I hope you're doing well. I'm a long-time subscriber, and I'm wondering if you still like patty pies because I know you used to love them and talk about them all the time. I haven't heard you mention it in a while. <laughs> yes, I do still love me a good patty pie. My waistline, on the other hand, said you need to slow down on the goddamn patty pie. I have a really bad problem with control, and that's not just with my mouth. Uh, well, I guess that is still my mouth. <laughs> I have a control problem, so when I get something I like, I want it all at once. And I was getting a little bit of weight with the patty pies. Like, I was getting a little bit more of this than I care for it. So I was like, let me slow down on the patty pie. Plus, uh, here in Williston, they're kind of hard to find nowadays. It's like everybody just discovered patty pies, and all of a sudden, everybody wants patty pies. So, uh, yeah, yeah, I do still like them. I do still like them. I just don't eat them as much. But I do eat them whenever I can. Um, Anna, will you stop? So thank you, Delaney, for your question. The next question comes to us from Holly Marks. Hi, Miss Coffee. Hey. I hope you're doing well. I have two questions. My first question is, how come when I get diamond paintings, sometimes the drills do not match up with the diamond paintings, even though they are they say they're they follow DMC, the DMC code? I just started to save my drills and noticed that a lot of them, the drills do not match up with the drills. Like, I have two different colors for 728. DMC 318 and 498. They came from two different kits, and now they are not matching up the DMC code diamond book I got. I'm sorry, this is too many questions. I'm just very curious. Because a lot of companies will use different dye lots, meaning they have, their dye lots can be a little bit off or a little too pigmented. Um... This actually happens a lot in diamond painting and people don't realize it and they'll go to like save drills and put the drills together and mix them and then realize that they don't look the same. This happens a lot and it's just because companies use different dye lots. I'm not sure what it is. Uh, the only the company that I found that is the closest to using the DMC code list is DIY Moonshop and Diamond Art Club. Uh, I haven't really checked like Craftably or Craft Ease. But I know DIY Moonshop and Diamond Art Club uh, essentially have it pretty much on point for the color-wise that I know of. Um, but it's just because they use different dye lots. And that's why I usually say try to store your drills separate because with the different dye lots, you can get seven different colors for 4 dollars And I'm colorblind, so I don't have time for that mess. Um, which goes back to, again, to the other question, do I ever miss put drills on the wrong spot? I'm colorblind, so a lot of the times if the dye lots aren't correct or the dye is off, I won't notice because I'm colorblind. <laughs> so thank you so much, Holly, for your question. It's just because they use different dye lots. My suggestion would be if you're going to store the drills away um, or you notice that the drill color is wrong, contact the company, let them know that that is not the correct color for that dye lot because they more than likely do not realize it and... Uh, See if they'll replace and or fix your issue. So, I, I hope that helps, Holly. 
Thank you so much for your question. The next question comes to us from Kim. Kim says, how do you store your leftover drills from all the beautiful diamond projects? Do you ever use them? I donate my drills after I'm done. I don't I don't keep them. Unless there are special drills, like my rhinestones and stuff. Um, I have a treasure chest that I got from Flossom Crafter over on Etsy. Um, Flossom, F-L-A-W-S-O-M-E, Crafter. <laughs> Flossom Crafter over on Etsy is where I get my treasured box. And my treasure box has cards that will separate all the DMC colors and everything else. That's how I store them when I do have them. And then a lot of times I just donate them to other people that need them. Which is funny because then people will ask me for them. And I'm like, I don't, I don't have them. And it's not because I don't want to give them to you. It's because I, I literally just gave them away. So no, I don't keep them. And uh, especially with me getting out of diamond painting, uh, I don't keep them. And I, don't, I, I, I have no reason to store them anywhere. So I just kind of give them away. Um, so thank you so much, Kim, for your question. The next question comes to us from Joan. Hey, Miss Coffee. Hey. If you were financially able to stay at home and work and only home and work and only work from one place such as Sensi, YouTube, or Twitch, which would it be? Twitch. Twitch. And I've actually thought about doing that, to be honest. Uh, with the way things are changing nowadays. <laughs> But the way things are changing nowadays, uh, my life has gotten super duper busy and it doesn't leave me much time for anything else. And as much as I love Cincy, that will probably come to an end because I'm already getting bored with it. Um, YouTube, I've been on YouTube now for four years and where I do love YouTube, YouTube itself, the, the, the company, the the whatever of YouTube has a lot of bugs that they haven't fixed. Like the fact that I spend most of my Saturday mornings for the first 30 minutes of my Saturday, I spend it uh, dealing with copyright strikes on videos that have, uh, that use music from the, the company Ben Sound. I will never use Ben Sound again. I would never recommend you use Ben Sound. Ben Sound, uh, so I've been dealing with these copyright issues for as long as I've been on YouTube, and they always go after, what it happens is these fake China people go after, and they're China people because their names have like the little lettering and it says China Enterprise and stuff like that. So I'm not being like racist or anything like that. Uh, these fake companies will claim the rights to a portion of a song. And what they're trying to do is get you to not dispute it so that they can collect the royalties off of it and that's how they make their money. Now, Ben Sound has a lot of free royalty-free music that anybody can use. You don't have to pay for it. You can just use it. So a lot of companies will use their website to siphon a song off of and go, that's my song. They can't use it. They have to pay me. When they do that, they dispute it with the person. Anytime that music is brought up, those... It could be like three or four notes of a song are brought up. They will dis they will dispute that you're using their music and that they're entitled to the royalties from that video. Um, you can either mute that section of the video, which I never do because, no, I did not waste all that time making that video to mute it. Or you can dispute it and then give them evidence how it's not that person's music, which is what I usually do. When this started happening and getting really bad about two years ago, I contacted Ben Sound to let them know that there was companies out here that keep trying to copyright claim music from their website. They said so. We know. We're working on it. It's been two years. They haven't fixed it yet. I will never use Ben Sound again. I will never recommend anybody use Ben Sound. They are garbage. Um, and YouTube, with their algorithm, if you're not putting up uh, five to six videos every week, if you're not consistent with those five cons to six videos, they tend not to push your videos. Um, and that, the way that they're, I don't like the way the algorithm has changed. And I've talked to Mr. Coffee about it numerous times. I don't think I'll ever leave YouTube. Like, I'll cut back a lot. But I really like the way that Twitch is set up, and I don't know if it's just because it's new or what, 
but I like the way that Twitch does things. I like the fact that once I'm done with a video, I'm done with the video. There's nothing else I need to worry about with that video. I don't need to go add anything else into that video. It's done. That's it. Um, versus with YouTube, I have to go back and add in cards. I have to add I cards. I have to add, you know, whatever to it. I don't have to do like editing or anything with Twitch. It's just there. It's just there. You get what you got. And I like that aspect of Twitch. So for right now, my answer would be I would stick to just only doing Twitch. Um, with Cincy, I like Cincy. I buy a lot of Cincy, which is one of the reasons why I wanted to start selling Cincy. I never thought that anybody else would be interested in buying <laughs> Cincy. <laughs> Um, but I just like buying it. And so I started off just wanting the cash back from it so I can get more stuff. And then people were interested in buying it. And so now I have a whole Facebook group, um, that I do it. I do like Scentsy, but I'm not the biggest fan of MLMs, to be completely honest with you. Um, I don't like the fact that in order to succeed, you have to depend on other people. Because if you know anything about anything, you can't depend on anybody to get you to where you want to go in life besides yourself. And I don't like the fact that I have to depend on other people to do their job so that I can do my job and keep my title. I don't like that aspect. I never did. And I never was interested in any title aspects at all with, with any company. So uh, they would be the first to go. Like, literally would be the first to go. Uh, I, I do okay with Cincy. But literally at this point, it's like, I literally just buy a bunch of Scentsy because <laughs> I like Scentsy. <laughs> I don't know. Um, so I would, I would definitely say if I had to choose one out of the three, it would definitely be Twitch right now. So thank you so much, Joan, for your question. The next one is from Busy Lizzie. Hey, Miss Coffee. Hey. I was TBD girl obsessed, but I finally found the edit name button, so I am excited to change my name. I am no longer... That old username. She is no longer True Vampire Diaries obsessed. Is it is it True Vampire Diaries? Vampire Diary. <laughs> true. <laughs> the Vampire Diaries. Gee, geez, um, oh my God. Well, Busy Lizzie, I'm so happy you were able to change your name. And she, oh, geez. <laughs> she, I have a drawing question. That looks like more than a question. <laughs> Do you like to draw realistic or animation type art? I like drawing cartoonish type art um so it would be animation type art like cur cartoons etc i draw animation but my sister draws realistic and she is so good with people looks like an actual photo but it's her drawing whereas i can draw people to i can't draw people to save my life i prefer animation i love drawing but obs been obsessed with diamond painting for the last few months but i'm definitely not complaining <laughs> Um, so I like drawing cartoon type art. So like Hello Kitty, I like drawing like little chibi animals, kawaii items. Uh, I'm leaning more towards kawaii nowadays just because I'm wanting to learn the art style. Like I'll get stuck on an art style until I feel like I've learned as much as I can possibly put into my brain for the moment and then I'll move on. So I've moved on from chibi to kawaii and kawaii is just something else I'm learning. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of realistic art, to be honest. Uh, not that I don't like it. I just, me personally, I don't want to do it. <laughs> I'm good with not having realistic art. I love having the cartoon art. Um, are you a sweet or savory person? I'm a sweet person. I apologize if I asked this, been asked. I've been feeling it has been, but I can't remember. I prefer sweet most days, but love cheese, garlic, bread, 24-7. It's only... My, it's my only food obsession. Um, I'm more of a sweet person. Um, I can do savory every once in a while, but I prefer sweet. By the way, I just watched your live from Friday, the 8th. Why did you get such a massive pen? I understand why it's called butt plug, but it's actually, is it actually functional? What is the story behind it? So if y'all don't know what she's talking about, she's talking about this. <laughs> So this is the pen I call butt plug, my butt plug pen. One, because if you know anything about sex toys, it looks like a butt plug. Two, don't ask me how I know about that. That's my life. <laughs> Three, um, 
One, is it functional? It is actually very functional. Two, the story behind it. I got this in a mystery box from a Enabler's Outpost. And it's a Christmas tree. So it was a Christmas box. It is a Christmas tree. has little rhinestones on it and everything, which is funny because none of them have fallen off. But it is very actual functional. It's a functional pen. I do use it. Um, not all the time, though, because I have big bear paws. So, like, sometimes, like, mm. Um, but the story behind it is I got it and I've always called pins like that butt plug pins. I didn't know I was getting it in that mystery box because it was a mystery. And it's just a pin that apparently is a butt plug pin. And I make it, I make a point to say that it's ribbed for their pleasure because it has like little rhinestones and then it has like little, cause it's supposed to be like a Christmas tree. So it has like the little ridges in it. Um, so yeah, like. It's just a diamond painting pen. It does work. It, I do use it. Um, it's just... It's a diamond painting. <laughs> um, so there you go, Busy Lizzie. That's, that's the story behind the butt plug pen. It's just a pen I got out of a mystery box from Enabler's Outpost. And it's just been a staple on the channel because everybody loves the fact that I say it's ribbed for their pleasure. I always say it's for those, pe those folks that be hating on me. I'd shove it up their ass. And it's ribbed for their pleasure. All right. So, that is it for the questions uh, over on the community tab. So, thank you to everyone who submitted a question. Um, I'm actually going to write something in the comment section to let people know that I already did this one. Uh, where's the little thing at? And now we're going to go over to the Facebook group. I'm not even going to take a break. I'm just going to go right on over to the Facebook group. I don't think we had too many in the Facebook group. But we're going to go right over to the Facebook group and answer the questions from there as well. Um, let's see here. We're going to get rid of this. If we can get to it. See all. We got that. There it is. All right. So, the first question comes to us from Annette. She says, what is the best advice you was given about life and did you take it? Stop letting everything get to me. The lady from Diamond Art Club. Did I take it? Not at the time. I have I have lately, but not at the time. Um, the, people, the, the lady that, that I'm in contact with, with from Diamond Art Club always tells me not to let so many things get to me that I don't have to react to everything. And at first I was like, I know you lying because somebody say something to me, they, hey, clap back. Nowadays, I'm like, I don't, I don't even have the energy to clap back anymore. I'm getting to that age where I'm too old to be clapping back at people. And I just want to sit peacefully in my, my little hobble of a craft room and just do what I want to do. So did I take it when she gave me the advice? No, not at all. Do I take it now? Most certainly. <laughs> so thank you so much, Annette, for your question. The next question comes to us from Laura. Hi, Miss Coffee. Hey. In Q&A number 13, you were asked about your habits that bug you and Mr. Coffee. My question is, do Orion or Maggie have habits that bug you? They're kids. <laughs> question answered. They're kids. Um, Maggie, Maggie has liabilities. That bugs the shit out of me because uh, the biggest, my biggest pet peeve in life is a liar. Especially when I know you're lying. And you don't think I know that you're lying, and I know that you're lying. There's a couple of people I know like that now in the community that like to lie, and they think that I don't know that they're lying. And I'm just like, you think I'm stupid? I just just keep quiet about it. But Maggie with the liabilities, Orion. Honestly, I don't think Orion does. And oh, no. I don't really think Orion does anything that irritates me or, like, is a pet peeve. Um, oh, yeah, he does. So Orion has a disorder that I don't know if he inherited from his dad or what. It's called emotional detachment disorder, where your emotions don't exactly line up with what's going on. So if I were to say, if, if, if Orion were to say, go outside and break his arm, he would laugh instead of cry. When you ask him what's wrong, he says, I don't know. Um, he 
he's been in like different programs to try to figure out what exactly brought this on and the only thing that we can possibly think of is the fact that the both kids sep suffered from separation disorder whenever that Mr. Coffee was gone. But uh, for the emotional part, Mr. Coffee's the same way. He has the emotional detachment disorder where he doesn't like emotion correctly. Um, so if I ask around, like if he if he falls and hurts himself, and I'm like, "Are you okay?" He'll be laughing with tears coming out of his eyes, and I'm like, "Are you okay?" And he's like, "I don't know." <laughs> For once, I just want this kid to be like, I'm, I hurt myself. It hurts. <laughs> I know, it's stupid, but you asked, and that's, that it is what it is. Second question. Is it no secret that you like to talk a lot and you have to be loud? Hold up. Is It's no secret that you like to talk a lot and you, you can be loud. Did you get in trouble in school for talking? Never. Never once got in trouble. Fighting? Yes. Talking? No. No. Um, believe it or not, I wasn't a confident child growing up. I was a very shy, timid inside of myself, didn't really like talking to other people. And that's because of some trauma I suffered as a child or during childhood. Um, so I didn't talk to anybody. This newfound confidence that you guys have uh, been witness to, that you see me, like, be loud, be talkative, you know, whatever. I didn't grow into this person. So, probably, like, I don't know, like, ten years ago? Ten years ago, I said, why am I spending my life quietly when I want to just be loud and proud about any and everything? I'm just gonna live like that. And that's how I've been ever since. Um... But I wasn't always the most confident person. I was really shy and timid. I would be very self-conscious about how big my teeth were or the gap in between my front teeth. So I would hide when I smiled and stuff. And now I'm just like, hey, y'all gonna see all of it. I don't even care. Um, I've learned to love myself and not care too much about what other people think. Um, and that was the big factor for me was the fact that I learned to love myself and not worry about what other people think. But when it came to talking in school and stuff, you wouldn't catch me talking in school. Never talked to anybody. I did have a close-knit group of friends like I do now. And I still talk to them. Like, still talk to them. But I never was like a chatty Cathy in school. Not like I am now. I don't know why. <laughs> um, third, when Mr. Coffee was working out in the oil field, was his laundry a nightmare? Like when he was working out in the field? Girl, look, listen. He doesn't work in the field now. He works in a shop. For, so for those wondering, Mr. Coffee works in a shop. Like, he runs a particular section of a shop, okay? When he first moved out here, he would actually go to location and work on location doing things. His laundry is still a nightmare, okay? He is a nightmare, <laughs> okay? <laughs> because Mr. Coffee, like, he'll t send me pictures of his arm just covered in oil and grease and all kinds of things and he'll wash up and come home and still have like the oil and grease stains on his hands and stuff he'll touch the white walls there are certain spots in my house that you can tell that mr coffee frequents often so if you look at my front door there's always a grease handprint that's on the back of the door from him taking his or on the wall behind the door from him taking his boots off if you go into my bathroom upstairs Closing the bathroom door, you can see a nice imprint of Mr. Coffee's hand right on the door. These are things that I have to clean off often, but I never catch them, like, all the time. So there's sometimes you will catch an oil handprint somewhere. He sits here at the dining room table. This part of the wall has oil on it. Um, the laundry room, the garage door sometimes will have oil on it. Just places that he f likes to frequent in the house. <laughs> you will see oil prints. So it's still a nightmare. We have to wash our clothes separately because if not, his clothes will ruin our clothes with the oil and stuff in them. Um, but yeah, it's 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 still a nightmare. <laughs> it's still a nightmare. <laughs> she says, thank you for doing the Q&As. They are a lot of fun. I love doing these Q&As. They are freaking hilarious. The questions you guys come up with. Good God. <laughs> All right. So the next question. Thank you, Laura, for your question. <laughs> the next question comes to us from Olivia. Hey, Miss Coffee. Hey, how you doing, Olivia? My question is, I have diamond painting that I would like to sell at a craft fair. How do I know what to charge? 
time plus something. I can't remember what it is. Time plus something. Um, it's hard what you think it's worth. How much did you pay for the kit? Add that into how much time did it take you to make? Now, do you want to be out here selling completed diamond? Depending on what it is, I wouldn't be out here selling completed diamond paintings for like $300 or anything like that. Like, no. Um, honestly, I would say like if I were to pick a kit, uh, let's pick, let's pick Inner Wonderland right here. If I were to sell this, like if it was framed and everything else and there was a big Alice in Wonderland fan, uh, yeah, if there was a big Alice in Wonderland fan and they wanted to purchase that, I probably pay what fifty bucks for the kit. It probably took me what two weeks to complete. Um, I would probably charge somewhere between a hundred to one hundred and twenty-five bucks for the kit if it was like framed and all kinds of nice and you know ready to go. One hundred and twenty-five bucks. Honestly, that's just me. Um, you pay what you feel you're worth, uh, and I'm not saying that if you charge if you charge thirty bucks, you think you're cheap. <laughs> no, not no, not like that at all. But you charge what you think your time is worth. Um, for me, the fact that I was completing them so quickly, uh, yeah, I would definitely say that that would run you 125 bucks. Something like this, probably 165 bucks. Um, one because I like five at the end of my numbers. Two because it took me some time to complete that. So yeah, just usually it's time plus. Uh, however much it costs for the materials to make it. But when it comes to diamond paintings and stuff, I guess kind of double what I paid for it. So, like, if I paid 50 bucks for it, I usually add maybe, like, 65 bucks to it. I'm making $65 profit off something I paid 50 bucks for. That's just me, though. I don't know, because I don't usually sell diamond paintings. So, thank you so much for your question. Um... The next one comes to us from Jarma. Jarma asked a question. I did answer it, but I'm going to ask it anyway in case anybody else is curious. Is there a company that sells diamond paintings of black women slash girls that aren't cartoonish? She wants realistic type diamond paintings. Now, Diamond Art Club will do this every once in a while. I believe they just had one last week called Flowers and Petals or something like that. Is the one that is the kit that everybody kept saying look like me and my family. And I'm like, please stop, you know, freaking profiling us. Um... That's more of a realistic type picture than a, a thing. But uh, if you're looking for a more realistic POC versus cartoony, uh, Diamond Art Club will do it every once in a while. DIY Moon Shop is pretty good at doing more realistic than cartoons. Uh, True Artist DP on Etsy is really good at it. And Lola Rose uh, Diamonds is really good on it. So those four companies are the four companies I would tell you to check out. Diamond Art Club, DIY Moon Shop, True Artist DP and Lola Rose Diamonds. Check those four companies out. Uh, True Artist is on Etsy. Lola Rose Diamonds. She has an Instagram page. And she uh, also has a website, which I believe is just Lola Rose Diamonds. Um, so check those places. They should have what you're looking for. So thank you, Jarma, for your question. The next question comes to us from Barbara. She says, hello, Miss Coffee." I was wondering, how do you see sneak peeks get distributed out? Do y'all get to pick in advance which one you'd like to unbox? Or does DAC send them out randomly? Thanks. It depends. They have a new way of doing it now. When I first was doing it with them, they would send me what they knew I, I would like. Now I get to actually pick which ones I want because they have a new person and she's still learning everybody. So usually what happens is they say, hey, we have some kits pick one. And I'm like, that one. And they're like, it's yours. Or somebody else has picked it. They're like, you know, pick another one. Somebody else got that one. So, uh, but usually I just, they, they contact me. They go, hey, here's some sneak peeks. Pick some. That, 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 that. All right. Pat, 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 pat. The good thing about it is by the time they get here, I don't remember what I got. So you're still getting a genuine impression of it. But, uh, most of the time, if there's a particular artist or kit that they know that I absolutely love, they will send it without telling me, and they'll just be like, we sent you something. Take it. So, yeah, that is how they are distributed. They just kind of go to each creator and go, hey, pick something. <laughs> um, so, thank you, Barbara, for your question. I think a lot of people actually wonder about that, because I'll, I'll even say it in videos. I'm like, I wonder what they sent us this week. Um, mostly because when they, a lot of the times when you pick out the sneak peeks, it's, 
it's a bunch of them at once. It's not just like you pick one and they send. No, it's a bunch of them at once. And I never remember which one is what for which week. And I have to ask them. So if I have to ask them, of course, I know which one I'm unboxing. But if I don't have to ask them and they, they're marked, uh, yeah, I still forget what they are. The good thing about Stroke Brain. Thank you, Barbara, for your question. The next question comes to us from Charlene. Is the dog upset with Miss you, Miss Coffee? I'm guessing she's talking about Killian Jones in that picture. He was mad at me. Um, so in that picture that you guys were answering on, which is a picture of Killian, again, looks like he's trying to eat the window. Um, me and Mr. Coffee used to smoke cigarettes. And because Orion is allergic and you're not allowed to smoke indoors, uh, we were outside on the porch and he was mad because he couldn't come sit on, out on the porch with us. So he started trying to eat the window. never said he was a smart dog <laughs> so thank you charlene for your question the next question comes to us from the creature hey miss coffee hey i hope you well i hope you're well today and the family too i have a couple of questions one i noticed during live you covered your kit with release papers does it not dry out the plastic covering on the hold up does it not dry out without the plastic covering on top it's gonna dry out as long as there's something covering it it won't dry out so i usually say release papers parchment never wax parchment paper or keep the plastic cover on um but no it won't dry out as long as there's something like on top of it so you should be fine um two may have been answered already but please refresh this old lady's brain lol what was Mr. Coffee talk, taking classes for? You mentioned it in another one. He was getting close to graduating. I'm pretty sure he quit. I haven't seen Mr. Coffee do homework or do anything school related in months. So I'm pretty sure he's done with classes. Uh, I'm pretty sure he just dropped out or something. I don't know. Uh, he, it's a very touchy topic in my house. Don't worry about asking it though. It's, it is what it is. Um, I honestly don't remember what he was going to school for. It's like gaming or programming or some crap i don't freaking know uh what was it it was something gaming that's all i remember i have like i said i have it's, it's literally been that long since i've seen him do anything with it that i don't think he does it anymore and i can't remember i could not guess to tell you what he was going for uh i'm trying to think as hard as i can about what it was but I have no clue. No clue. Uh, and like I said, it's been a touchy topic, topic between us, so I don't even talk to him about it. I, I, I was like, you know what? Do your thing. Whatever. Best of luck to him for his continued education. Thanks for... Love you. Uh, yeah, because work got so busy and stuff, he just kind of... I, I think he just stopped doing it. I, I don't know. For a while there, he said he was doing it uh, at work, and then he stopped doing it at work, and I, I don't know. I don't know what he's doing with his life. So, thank you so much, Lucretia, for your question. The next question comes to us from Donna. Hey, Miss Coffee. Hey. I have a few questions about Killian. Shoot. One. Was Killian born with a zinc deficiency, zinc deficiency or did it develop? It developed. Two. What actually is zinc deficiency? A zinc deficiency is where your body does not absorb the vitamins and nutrients that it's supposed to correctly. And so it causes you to be zinc deficient, which is a mineral, I want to say, for something, that you're supposed to have in your body that helps you absorb vitamins and minerals and stuff. And when you don't, especially in dogs, it can create a slew of health issues, one being hair loss, which is why a lot of the times you will see pictures of Killian all the time, and then you'll stop seeing pictures of Killian, and you're like, what, does she not like Killian anymore? No. I just don't post pictures of Killian with his face torn up because having to explain that all the time is just annoying. Um, but a zinc deficiency essentially just means, like, in Killian's case, Killian was fine until we moved here. Like, a month or so after we moved here, he developed a zinc deficiency. I don't know why. We don't know how it happened. It just happened. Just like a human can just develop an allergy. Like, I wasn't always allergic to seafood. Um, I didn't develop the allergy until I was like nine. Um, it just kind of developed. And three, D 
did you try to call Killian's breeder to see if he knows what to do for his zinc problem since the breeder has bred Siberian Huskies? I have, and the vet paid for, or the breeder paid for the bills for the first six months to a year. Um, but it wasn't something that he saw regularly in his Huskies. Um, this is something that is prone to happen to Huskies, just like hip dysplasia is prone to happen in German Shepherds. Doesn't mean it's going to happen, but it can happen, and it just happened to happen. And Killian was, from as far as I know, because I know two of the other people that got uh, Killian's brothers from the same, like, from the same uh, pack as Killian was born into. Killian had two brothers, and I know the people that have the two brothers, and they don't have any issues with their husky, but Killian developed the zinc allergy, or the deficiency. Um, and it's just something that he developed. Can it go away? Yes, with the right procedures it's supposed to, but Killian has a, a, a different type of it, and that's the part that is frustrating because no matter how much medicine you give him, he will get better long enough for the medicine to clear his system, and then he's back to where he's at. That is not supposed to happen, and that's what they're trying to figure out now is why is it that he's not getting better, he's just getting worse. So, uh, in Killian's case, it's just a weird case of it. Um, it doesn't make us love him any less. He's still a derp. But <laughs> he's, like, literally laying here right now looking at me like, I know you're talking about me. Um, but, yeah, it's just a deficiency of zinc in your body that helps you absorb minerals and stuff, as it was explained to me into your body properly and in his case it causes him to lose the fur from like right above his ears down to his snoot he used to use, lose it under his chin but that stopped and every once in a while you'll see on his legs he'll have like little bald spots because mostly because he's biting and scratching at it um but the, he literally just went to the vet the other day he got a clear clean bill of health minus the zinc deficiency but they have him on some new medication to see if this was going to help if not we have a a plan of action to see what we can do to make him as comfortable as possible. It doesn't seem to bother him, so it is what it is. It's just, I guess, itchy sometimes. Um, what are you doing, bud? He's just kind of sitting on the floor. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, but the breeder, he knows about this hap being able to happen in Huskies. It just hasn't happened often in Huskies that he's dealt with. So he didn't really know a whole lot about it either besides he knew it could happen. So thank you so much, Donna, for your question. And then the last question comes to us from Trish. She says, I don't have a question. <laughs> All right. Just wanted to tell you, you, I have been watching you for years now, and I love all the stories about the family. And not only are you my favorite YouTuber, you're one of the reasons I started drawing. And the other artists I watch on Twitch have been... The inspiration, oh, the spicy peach. Uh, the reason I started drawing, and you have you and other artists I watch on Twitch have been inspiration for me to start drawing. You have come along with your art as well as here on your channel since you first started posting videos. I recognize all the hard work you have put into you, to it and go at your own pace. Friends, don't overdo it or burn yourself out. We will still be here and will watch any craft thing you do. Thank you so much, The Spicy Peach. I really appreciate it. This is The Spicy Peach from Twitch and now from YouTube. I really appreciate that. Um, yeah, because diamond painting... Diamond painting nowadays doesn't seem to be something that interests me. I'm not having any fun doing it. I don't mind doing it for Q&A, or like, not for Q&As, but for, for whipping chats. For some reason, I don't mind doing it for whipping chats. I would like to do more drawing whipping chats. Uh, just setting all the stuff up to do it, I don't know. But I don't mind doing it every once in a while, but it's not something I do, like, off-camera for fun anymore. Um, just because I have been so focused on learning as much as I can with art. Um, because I do, and I get asked this question all the time, you know, are you going to ever have your art be a diamond painting? And it's like, I have to get to a point where my art is good enough to be a diamond painting. Where you guys might look at a piece I do and go, this one's really good. I don't feel it's at a spot where it needs to be. And in order for me to get to that spot, I have to practice a lot. But I have been taking more breaks from it just because I don't want to get burnt out on it. I'm not necessarily burnt out on diamond painting. It just, like most things, where your 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 uh, craftiness shifts to a different craft, 
it's essentially the same thing. I've been doing diamond painting nonstop for the last four years, and my craftiness, where it's not burnt out on it, it just wants to do something else. So, like, I went from crocheting for 10 plus years to diamond painting for four years. Now I'm on art. And uh, it my brain just switches around like that with different crafts. So uh, that's one of the reasons why I haven't been diamond painting off camera is because I have been, like, taking Skillshare classes. I've been getting uh, advice from other artists I meet on Twitch or artists that I know from, like, Diamond Art Club or DIY Moon Shop, uh, the ones that would talk to me. But... Um, like, I've gotten art advice from Hannah Lynn. I've gotten art advice from Manny Manzano, JoJo's Arts. Uh, a lot of the people that I look up to and their biggest thing is practice. Practice, practice, practice. The problem with that is, is when you run a crochet, or a crochet, when you run a crafting channel, they're going to be expecting you to do that particular craft or that particular whatever. And with me having to practice, it's okay, on camera, I'm going to diamond paint, but offline, I need to practice doing hands or I need to practice doing faces or bodies or whatever. So that's part of the reason why you guys haven't seen me diamond painting or my diamond paintings getting very far is because I've lost interest in it because I'm so focused on trying to learn to draw. And where I know about 90% of the people on this channel are here for diamond painting. It's one of the reasons why I haven't stopped doing it, but now I have another place that I can do my drawings whenever I want to, which is over on Twitch. So yeah, I really appreciate you saying that to Spicy Peach. And I hope that your art journey goes as smoothly as it possibly can because it's lots of fun learning all the things that you can draw. So with that, that is it for this week's Q&A. Thank you to everyone who submitted a question for this week. I am going to take a break for next week uh, just because I will be getting the kids revved up for school. And so uh, that's kind of going to be my last weekend, I believe, with the kids before they go back to school. So I'm taking the weekend off next weekend. So Q&A number 15 won't happen next weekend. It won't happen until the weekend after the kids start school again. So thank you again to everyone who submitted questions this week. I really, really appreciate it. And thank you to you for watching. Now, if you do have any questions that are pertinent that really need to be answered right away uh, and you don't want to wait for the Q&A, which I thought there was another question on there that I might have missed. Maybe I missed it. Um, let me make sure. Because I, I could have sworn I saw a question from Darcy. Darcy, I did see a question, a relationship question from you. And I don't see it now. So if you still have that question, please send me a message. Because that's a question I really didn't want to answer online anyways. Send me a message and I'll answer your question for you. We can sit and talk about that question. Because that was actually a pretty good question. So with that said... I'm out of here. Thank you so much for watching. If you have, again, any questions, comments, concerns com pertaining to this Q&A, or if you have something pertinent that you need to say to me, uh, leave it down in the comment section below, and I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. But with that said, I must now bid you adieu. But not for reminding you that it's still hard out here in these crafty streets. Please remain safe. Wear your mask. Wash your hands. Don't touch your face in public. That's gross. Keep your six feet. Always try to remember to be kind to others because you never know what somebody else is going through. Be courteous because it's the right thing to do. And always stay cool. Bye, guys.